In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he was in Jerusalem, he said a great many things that oftentimes where he was about to be stoned because of some of the things he said. I'll give you an example. Sometimes people challenge and say, well, Jesus was a nice guy, but you're saying he's God? He didn't say he was God, did he? I mean, and then I ask, you're reading the scriptures, right? You're reading the actual witnesses from the apostles of his words. In one point, Jesus said, before Moses was, I am. And I use that as a powerful statement because to the Jews who were listening to him, this is a powerful witness. A powerful witness because clearly they knew what he was saying. In fact, later in that passage, it, they, it says they picked up stones. They were about to stone him because they were like, ah, did you, you just said what? What he said was, before Moses was, I am. And that is exceptional. He is not saying that I simply pre-existed Moses, which is also quite a thing to say. He is saying, I am. When Moses asked God his name, he said, what is your name that I can call you for people? What can I tell people your name is? He said, I am that I am. So Christ was saying, I not only pre-existed Moses, but I was the one speaking to Moses. This is a powerful faith, but a faith that often in this world can be thwarted, can be put aside, can be looked at as good socialization, a good philosophy, something to live by, but not to do too much of it. This is the furthest thing from the truth. The truth is, we have nothing else. We have the love of each other. We have the love of our Lord. The love of our Lord is freely given if we would come to him. Lazarus, as we remember in today, yesterday's gospel, was dead. Four days dead. Even so much his sister Mary said to the Lord, when he said, take away the stone, uh, it's going to smell. She said, there will be an odor by now. Christ encouraged and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He demanded that the stone be taken back. And Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, was greeted by the calling to come out from the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one who created heaven and earth. This is our faith. The faith that brings forward the bows and the palms, which are triumphal remembrances. Remembrances of a triumphal victory. What is his victory? Over death. This is why we call it Passover. We call it Pascha. Pascha, our Pascha, is now the ability for us to live a new life. But if we put it aside, on a shelf, as an insurance policy, we are no better than the ones who would deny him, who would think that, well, I did a little bit. When we, in our world, want a child to become a doctor or a lawyer or some other profession, we know that there's a lot of hard work, and we encourage them, and encourage them, and encourage them. How much do we encourage in our faith? How much do we live the example of faith for them? We know that what they put into it, they will get out of it. If they work hard, they will succeed. And this lesson in this world, and somehow, unfortunately, thanks 
to many of Western Christianity and Eastern Christianity, people have subscribed to our faith as an insurance policy, and it is not. It is a living faith, a faith where we cry out to our Lord every day, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you don't think that, you haven't been to enough funerals. When you see the person there, when you see that this world ends, that we will no longer be in this world, then you will understand that what matters in this life, it is a puzzling thing for me as a priest oftentimes to ask and to say, what happens? Why don't people see? And the answer is, we need to reach out. Not just a little bit, but with all our efforts. An understanding came to me recently about our faith. And I'll share with you something interesting. If you take the people who are SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and you question what is their faith in alien life if you're going to compare it to our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You look at what they do. They endlessly search, and I mean it, endlessly search, believing wholeheartedly that they will spend their entire life hoping and searching that one time, just once even, that they notice something that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is an alien life. They are so convinced of this, they endlessly pray, reaching, these are prayers, reaching out, seeking, finding. And what do we do? We see many blessings, many miracles. Do we have that faith? The faith to say, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. Christ is the King of our lives, our hearts, our minds, and our belief in him changes everything. Don't be fooled by this world. Don't be swindled into living an earthly life. You can live a godly life at the same time. Why cast what is so precious away, your life, your soul? It is worth more than that. The Lord loves you more than we know how to love. If you doubt that, come to all the holy services. See what our Lord endured. See how much he cares. When Lazarus was dead and he saw the people suffering, he wept, knowing that he would resurrect him. He wept. He wept because he shares in our pain, shares in our suffering. It is not an insurance policy, but a relationship with our Lord, an active one, one that we should put more effort in than anything in our lives. I repeat, one that we should put more effort into than anything in our lives. What we put into is a generous, kind, and loving Lord, willing to receive us after every fall, willing to lift us up, willing to suffer with us, willing to comfort us in our pain, willing to give a reason for our life, willing to help us through this transition from this life to the next. When we cry out for Zen, we cry out from here to the next life. We cry out to our Lord and Savior, who transcends this life. We too can transcend.